good afternoon. Uh, is this, this is going to be a very interesting uh, debate. Uh, and in continuation with whatever Rajesh and uh, his associates uh, have discussed in detail, uh, we have a debate between neoadjuvant chemotherapy with radiation or neoadjuvant chemotherapy alone in locally advanced adenocarcinoma of esophageal cancer. Now, this is a very specific area because most of these trials actually uh, will uh, uh, give combination of squamous along with adeno, but here what we are looking at is, is uh, purely adeno. So, can we have Dr. Anushil uh, Munshi, please? He will talk in terms of new adjuvant chemotherapy with radiation therapy. Now, we would like to have a poll uh, before the whole uh, discussion starts. How many of the, uh, the audience are in favor of NACT with RT versus NACT alone as the definitive methodology of treatment? You have your uh, voting machines. Anushil, I think people are... <laughs> so, so Anushil has got an uphill task here uh, because we have something which is uh, very interesting because people are more in favor of chemo. Now, let's see how uh, he wins his game. Thank you, sir. Challenge accepted. So, uh, the question is NACT plus RT versus NACT in locally advanced esophageal cancer and especially adenoCAs we, are, we'll be, we shall be talking about. We all know the advantages of neoadjuvant therapy in C. esophagus. We know the disadvantages of neoadjuvant therapy in C. esophagus as well. But coming to the point, 2012 was a landmark moment, I would say, in NEGM. We had this publication of cross trials, CT1 and 1M0 or CT2 to 3, N0, 1, M0, squamous cell carcinoma or adenocarcinoma of the esophagus or uh, G junction, neoadjuvant CTRT, carboplatin, paclitaxel, and concurrent, as has been already said, 41.4, followed by surgery, compared with surgery alone, two-year overall survival jumped from 50% surgery alone to 67%, those who received NACTRT plus surgery. But as usual is a story, the medical oncologist said, I can do this all <laughs> alone. <laughs> Don't need anyone else. <laughs> so, cut to 2019. We had the trial, FLOT, two chemotherapy regimens alone. No radiation anywhere in the scope of things. FLOT versus ECF, e uh, ECX, and uh, it was a perioperative chemotherapy schedule, gastric, and to be noted, 50% of the patients actually don't fit the bill here, because 50% of the patients are just gastric. Leave them out. So this trial is not fully representative of the situation. Anyway, 50% are there, 50% G-junction uh, adenocarcinoma, C1, 2, 3, CT2 or higher node positive stage, CN plus or both. And they found that there was a definite benefit in survival using FLOT, comparing it with ECF, ECX. Now, how that makes it superior to CROSS, I really don't know. And also it was said that signet ring uh, tumors especially have a this is a subgroup of patients which have a pronounced benefit with FLOT. Coming to 2021, the cross story continued. And we had this very recent and very important publication in 2021 in JCO. But before I tell about that, I should tell you about the fact that in cross, 75% of the patients were adenocarcinoma. So cross is more, much more representative of adenocarcinoma than it's representative of squamous cell carcinoma. Point number two, distal esophagus and esophageal gastric junction tumors, 90% of the population. This is totally converse to what we usually have in our mind, and this is something that we always have doubts about. Let us be very clear about this fact. Overall survival outcomes, we know uh, what the outcomes were, definite, again, reinforcing what was said earlier, definite survival benefit. And then people started having this subgroup analysis saying, oh, squamous cell carcinomas are doing better compared to adenocarcinoma. But come on, 75% adenocarcinoma, and look at the overall survival curves in the overall situation. So new adjuvant chemoradiotherapy reduced the risk of death from esophageal cancer, has that issue 0.6. Going back to FLOT again, comparing FLOT versus ECF. Look at all the red lines here, all the red bars here. 
diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, leukopenia, neutropenia, anemia, so on and so forth. All much, 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 much worse with flot. Gr these are grade three, grade four. These are not grade one, grade twos. Grade three, grade four events. And this is the p-value on the right side. Flot significantly worse. Okay. What are the toxicities? How do, you, how do they fare compared to flot and cross stuff? If you take the two trials. Neutropenia, grade three, four. 51% with flot, 2% with cross. Just 2%. Diarrhea, 10% flawed, 1% cross, and so on and so forth. So clearly, the flawed story is a shaky, crumbling house. Compared to cross, which is holding up steady. And then you, again, you'll ask, where is the randomized trial comparing the two? So you do have some preliminary data coming from the Neo-AG's trial, which is kind of comparing a flawed kind of a scenario with cross kind of a scenario in arm A and arm B, respectively. And this is what the situation of the patients is, and this is what the grouping and everything and the deaths. And true, the overall survival curves were kind of similar. So point number one, cross and flot, same to same in overall survival. But look at this, R0, 95, negative margins, 95% with cross, 82% flot. YPN0, 60% cross, 42% flot. Tumor regression grade one and two, 41% cross, 12% flot. Pathological CR, 16% cross, 5% flot. On and on and on. So trial after trial after trial is telling you the same story, whether it's the POET trial, whether it's the Australian trial, whether it's the Neuris trial, that PCR rates are much better with cross-like regimen. R0 rates are much better. Overall survival tending to become better. These are the reasons cross should be preferred. Flot is much more toxic. Flot seems to benefit only a small subgroup of patients. Cross is having high rates of R0, and cross, mind you, was done many, many years ago. Older radiotherapy techniques, mostly 3D CRT, very simple 3D CRT compared to what we're doing now. So in present day, if we do cross kind of a technique with IMRT, things are only going to improve. The message from cross is clear. Multidisciplinary, clear, multidisciplinary care is the clear winner. Of course, we need to explore further strategies, which new adjuvant Combination is better along with radiation, ideal. Uh, for example, in HER2 positive adenocarcinoma, what should you do? But as of today, CROSS is the clear winner. With that, I rest my case. Almost half a mind to uh, ask for another poll, just to assess Anushil's ability to convince people. And if the, if the voting reverses, as compared to what we had, we'll recommend him for the 2024 election. <laughs> but unfortunately, I think uh, Dr. Deshmukh and uh, company will not allow me to have this kind of a, uh, uh, artistic kind of a freedom. So I would like to ask our uh, next speaker to come in and uh, talk in favor of uh, new adjunct chemotherapy. <laughs> So Dr. Anushil has al almost made it into a presidential debate and reminds you of Joe Biden and the recent Rishi Sunak. And I agree we should not have a poll now because, I mean, when, 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 the lim when, the poll, when the debate is ongoing and the voting is due, you can't influence the public. So, so, <laughs> so, so what are we talking about? What disease are we treating here? So we're treating a, a disease which arises in our food pipe, the esophagus. And you know it's, it's a little complex situation, right? As you go up this food pipe, you do see, see more and more squamous cancers and your surgery becomes more and more complicated. So today's debate is on adenocarcinomas and, and when we talk about adenocarcinomas, fortunately, they don't arise very high up, they arise way down and our surgical colleagues are pretty good in getting you an excellent local control and by, the, by their surgeries. And the previous two panel discussions you heard that there are so, so many things which have evolved and they are new. Now, but then when we look at clinical trials, uh, it kind of lumps up everything, right? You heard so, much, so many times cross, 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 and, and, and the cross does include everything, adenocarcinomas, squamous carcinomas. Let me ask you one thing. If in this foot pipe, if you have a lymphoma, would you also put him in cross trial? Obviously no, right? Because these are fundamentally different diseases. And if you have diseases which are so different, you can't, first of all, club them into a trial. Now, now, even the trials which I'm going to show you, uh, a lot of it is actually clubbing G-junction with gastric, but, but that is something which we'll discuss in coming time. 
Now, another thing which we all need to know is when we treat our patients, uh, we all need to know how they fail, when they fail, and where they fail. Right? So esophageal cancer and, and, and these curves, these are not metastatic patients. These are all patients who have early disease or locally advanced disease. So technically, intent of therapy is cure or cure. And then you see how those stage three, so you don't even look at it, like how the curves are dropping, like this is somebody just falling off the cliff. So, and where are, these patients are dying, right? And they're dying of what? Are they dying of local failure or distant failure, right? Obviously, we all know they all die of distant failure. Also, what we need to keep in mind is, what is the local treatment we're going to do and how easy or how difficult that is going to be? This is an older study, but it's a study looking at quality of life. And if you see, uh, like from 100, if you see the curves are starting at around, around 60. So when you do surgery, obviously your quality of life is poor. What happens? Patients get discharged and if a few months time, you expect them to spring back to normal and have normal quality of life. But this is not a cancer where they, most of our patients actually never come back to normal quality of life. And these are patients, even, even those 50% uh, of patients whom you're curing. So, so you are actually going to give them a very difficult local treatment. Do you want to increase their difficulty by adding something like radiotherapy? Now, Dr. Dr. Anushil scared you with some paper toxicities, saying, look at this, neutropenia, diarrhea, but all those things disappear after the chemotherapy is over, but what about radiotherapy toxicity? That, that, I, that I think is a debate for another day. Now let's look at data, right? Uh, so, so there's a saying, right? In God, we believe everybody else should show, show data. So when we look at data, we know it's, a, it's a, uh, all the trials, what is on your screen, all the four trials are European trials. And, 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 and I'm not taking very old a trial. These are all less than 20 years old. And you see that in the first three trials, the control arm was surgery alone. Even in cross, the control arm was surgery alone. I'm, what I want to tell you is, what I'm going to tell you and try to convince you, that data is based on 2,245 patients, right? And the last one, the flawed trial. The flawed trial, the control arm was already a very effective treatment. That is the ECX or ECF and still the, the hazard ratio of 0.77. So, so the flawed trial is, is basically showing you the benefit of docetaxel addition. It's not telling you about chemotherapy uh, overall. Everybody in this room believes chemotherapy is a life-saving treatment, right? And, and if you see the absolute gain in, in, in the magic and the French trial is almost 13%, 14%, add docetaxel to this, this cocktail and it goes up by even more 9%. Now, now the, the, the criticism would be that many of them are gastric cancer. So I've, I'm, I'm showing you the hazard ratio of junctional cancer in pink, and the numbers look as good, or actually even better, hazard ratio of 0 0.49, 0 0.57, and, and, and these are not less number of patients. So see, we, we talked about cross, right? If you look at squamous cell cancers in cross alone, sorry, adenocarcinoma in cross alone, not even 300 patients. So where are 300 patient data, and where is 2,000 patient data? So, so also you have to be a little cautious in just putting all your money in one bag and believing one trial, right? You know how trials are done, how, how strongly they regulate the kind of surgery, the quality of surgery, the kinds of patients who go in. And okay, let's just look at even CROSS. So if you, if you actually see junctional cancer and uh, uh, in, in CROSS, it was only about 88 patients, right? Even though Dr. Anushil said that, that a lot of adenocarcinomas were there, but if you predominantly look at junctional cancer, there's only 88 patients. So, so my take on this is that perioperative chemotherapy advice uh, is based on more trials and larger number of patients. Now, I'm, I, we, you can't just throw away radiation out of, this, uh, out of this mix without actually convincing yourself that radiation is not useful. So I'll try to do that to you right now in the, my next few slides. Look at meta-analysis. These are older trials, but then if you see uh, if you see the, the yellow lines are basically trials which have larger weightage, more than 5%, more than 7%. And look at the point estimate there. Everything is towards chemotherapy. I, actually, in one of those studies, there can even, it reported that could even be a detriment. So why do we love radio, radiotherapy? We love radiotherapy because, every, because we've been convinced across sites by our radiation colleagues that we will give you good path CR, we will give you good local control. But then what is the surgeon for then, right? If you, if you can give me good local control, I don't need the surgeon, right? Anyway, surgeon is going to remove this tumor. Why you want to kill the same, same snake twice, right? 
So, but then if you look at what exactly, I mean, we're not treating squamous cancer, uh, this is adenocarcinoma. So what the path CR rates here agree it's more than chemotherapy, but it's not wonderful. Uh, if you see a cross study, it also depends on the number of grays, and it can go from 13% to 28%. But where, how, how far behind is chemotherapy? Chemotherapy also, if you look at a three drug regimen, it's close to 10 to 15%, right? So if you look at a little lower dose of radiation and you use a triplet regimen, they, they give you almost equivalent, 10 to 15%. Now coming to uh, like a head-on uh, comparison, this is the New Ages trial. Uh, we just saw preliminary results in 2021. The full text is not yet out. But this is the kind of trial we need. We need... Uh, two arms, one, one having radiation, one not having radiation, and seeing what is the difference in overall survival. Now, now when this trial was designed, in, uh, that time maybe the flawed trials were not out, so it was an option added later. So the number of patients who actually got flawed was actually very less, 27 patients. So, so whatever results you're seeing right now is basically the ECX chemo, and we know epirubicin doesn't work in this disease, so it's actually doublet chemotherapy. But even a doublet chemotherapy, or if you want to say it, say ECSX triplet chemotherapy, was as good. So basically, when you can get the same results in two modalities, do you really need the third modality, right? And, and if you look at only flawed patients, uh, there the R0 resection margin, path CR was 15%, right? So even if you care about path CR, you, you believe that local control, local path CR will translate into better local control or better survival, Flot gives you, I mean, a, a very good uh, local control as well. Now I'm just putting, I'm just comparing two trials side by side, and you just have to do a little bit of a math, right? So flot is better than ECF, right? And cross is equal to ECF. So who's the winner? Right? It's a simple math, right? So I leave that to you. Just one slide on toxicity. Toxicity now. We, we all saw all those, uh, uh, the, the acute toxicities of chemotherapy. What about the late-term complication of radiation therapy, right? These patients are already not eating properly. During radiation, their nutrition goes down, right? After surgery, I showed you, they still have long-term effects. We don't even know the long-term effects, the cardiac effects, the second malignancy rates. These trials have not, did, uh, most of the time, these trials are, are reported and published, so we don't even know those data. So, and also surgical mortality. I mean, I mean if, you, if you search PubMed about what proportion of patients in India after CTRT go for surgery, what is the complication rates? I, I'll tell you the picture is not as rosy as what the cross guys are talking about. So with that, I will conclude, and I think I've convinced the audience. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ashish. Now, uh, Anushil, you'll get five minutes for rebuttal to whatever he has said. Uh, it's pure rebuttal, no new points to be introduced. You can actually argue everything against whatever he has said. I need only one or two minutes, not even five minutes. A few basic statistics. Do we know how many patients of flawed trial actually completed the flawed regimen? Any guesses? 45%. 55% did not even complete flawed. Such a toxic, deadly regimen that has been built. Compared to that with the soft, lovely cross regimen for whom the surgeons have vouched in the previous panel itself that cross is so soft that <laughs> Surgeons can easily operate after cross has been administered. So where is the comparison? My friends, this debate is not only about G-junction tumors. This debate was about esophageal adenocarcinomas. I'm again telling you again and again. And cross is the most beautiful and glaring example of how esophageal adenocarcinomas should be managed in 2022. Thank you. So, so number of cycles of chemotherapy delivered. I'm saying if, if half the treatment is giving you equal results, you don't probably need eight cycles, right? That's why we do randomized trials. And that's why we have those overall survival curves for, right? And uh, the, the second point, I said GE junction. Now, the definition of lower esophagus GE junction up to five centimeters, so that's, that's the standard definition we have. So GE junction doesn't mean it, it, it also includes lower esophagus. 
uh, that's all yeah it's getting very interesting now this uh, <laughs> debate between anushil <laughs> and Ajay. is this going to be a debate between um, amitabh and abhishek or amitabh versus amitabh is something which you guys will decide now so you will have to vote now again uh, regarding whether we should have nact with rt or nact alone in locally advanced esophageal adenocarcinoma please vote Well, you have your result here, so very, very little for me to comment <laughs> anything at all. Congratulations. I think we had, we had great fun. Thank you very much.